Hi class, in the last video, we ended with two try it questions. The first being, what happens if we are in a recession? And the government decides it needs two policies, one monetary and one fiscal. The first being an increase in the money supply and the second being an increase in the government spending. So they're doing this to try and lessen the fluctuations of the business cycle. So we're trying to make the jumps in GDP a lot smaller. So let's take this piece by piece. First, we're going to draw out our ISLM ASAD model. So as we know, we have the long run and the short run aggregate supply. Here is our aggregate demand, our short run aggregate supply, which I will label P bar, and our long run aggregate supply. Now all these will match in the middle at one common equilibrium. And here's our Y1. We're going to bring this up and say our equilibrium in the ISLM model will be right at that black dot, just to make drawing a lot easier. Okay, so on this side, we will do our notes and calculations. The first thing we're going to do is talk about the short run. Now, the first short run piece is an increase in the money supply. So let's draw it out. We're going to look at the money market since the nominal money supply is in there. So M over P1, M over P, and we have our real interest rates. So what happens if our nominal money supply increases? So we see an increase in nominal money supply and an overall increase in the real money supply. This will shift the real money supply to the right and lower interest rates. Now, when we lower our interest rates, we know that the LM curve has to shift to the right to match. So let's say they're about right there. Okay. Now we need to look at the second portion, which I will write in green. We have a increase in the government spending. So we know this is in the goods and services market. E equals C plus I plus G. So if we increase our government spending, we're going to increase the expenditure. And when we increase expenditure, the IS curve shifts to the, the right. So we're going to shift it to the right. IS2. Okay, so now that we have both short run pieces done and we have found a new equilibrium at LM2 and IS2, we need to bring this down to the aggregate supply curve or aggregate supply, aggregate demand graph. So let's bring this all the way down and we'll be at Y2. Now we know our aggregate demand will be AD2 and we'll be sitting at this point in the short run. So in the short run, we see an increase in our output, no changes in P because in the short run, prices can't adjust. And then we also see a questionable change in our real interest rates. So these real interest rates are determined by how large of a shift this money supply changes or how large of a change this government spending is. Because if the government spending is larger, the IS curve will shift further, which could make the real interest rates higher. If it is smaller, the IS curve would shift just a little bit, which could make the real interest rates smaller. Or the shifts in the LM curve and the IS could be exactly the same, which could mean this real interest rate is the same. So right now, we don't really know what happens to the real interest rates because I didn't quantify the changes in the government spending 
or the money supply. Okay, so now let's look at the short run or the long run. And let's use blue. So we know that in the long run, prices adjust. And we want to find out, okay, how do we get back to our long run aggregate supply? Well, we do that by following our aggregate demand curve. So we'll follow this aggregate demand curve all the way up to P3. So this price matches back to the long run aggregate supply. And we know that our price has to increase to get back to the long run aggregate supply. So M over P1, if prices increase, the real money supply will fall. So interest rates will have to rise, which means the LM curve will shift back to the left. And we know that when we get to the long run aggregate supply, our output has to follow back to the original position. Because the only way to really boost the long run economy is to change the productivity or increase the productivity, decrease the input prices. So these policies are generally just used as short run adjustments to increase GDP out of a recession. Okay, so back on track. We need to get back to Y1 or the long run aggregate supply. Now we know our price is at P3, our aggregate demand is at AD2. So if we bring this all the way up and we know we're at IS2, we have to shift our liquidity and money curve all the way back here. So there's going to be quite a large change in the prices and the money supply to get us all the way back to the long run equilibrium. So in the long run, we know that we see an increase in interest rates. We see a decrease in our output and an increase in prices. So if we put this together, the total change in this economy, well, we know output didn't change because there was no change in productivity. And we know our prices increased. But now we can also see that it doesn't matter what happened in the short run of this example. In the long run, our real interest rates are going to rise all the way up to R3. So we see an increase in our real interest rates. Now this is a pretty complex example because of all the moving parts and the questionable change in the interest rates. But it really shows you that in the short run, all we're trying to do is boost the economy through GDP to pull us out of this recession. And in the long run, well, things kind of fall back to normal. And the only real repercussion is our increased interest rates. So here's a, it's a good example of seeing what happens for recessions and why it matters. Okay, so the next example is a little lighter. We're gonna go back to one change. So let's draw out our ISLM curves. And our aggregate demand, aggregate supply. Ooh, it's a little crooked, but that's okay. We get the point at this example. Y1, Y. Here's our long run aggregate. Oop. Long run. I'll just undo it. Long run aggregate supply. There we go. And our price levels. So remember, P bar is the short run aggregate supply. Bring this all the way up. IS, Ooh, this is a little weird looking one, LM, but an economy can look like that. Okay, R1. So in this example, we're going to see what happens when money demand falls. So we're looking at money demand and we know money demand is in our aggregate supply, aggregate demand curve, or I'm sorry, money demand is in our money market. M over P1, M over P, and R1 and R. So if we see a fall in our money demand, MD2, we know that our real interest rates are going to fall to R2. 
Now, like always, if the money demand falls, which causes a fall in our real interest rates, we know that there's going to be a shift to the right to match in the LM curve. So that'll be LM2. Our real interest rates will be at R2. And then we're going to bring this down. Our output will be at Y2 and our aggregate demand curve will shift to match. So aggregate demand two. Okay, so now we are at this point in our short run equilibrium. So in the short run, we could easily say that our prices don't change. They never change in the short run because prices are sticky. Our real interest rates, well, they fall. And our output, we see rises. Okay, now how do we get to the long run? Like always, to get to the long run, we have to change prices. And in this economy, we know to get to the long run, our prices are going to rise because we're going to follow this aggregate demand curve, which does not shift to get to the long run. We have yet, we have not shifted the aggregate demand curve past the short run. So we're just gonna follow it up to meet where the long run equilibrium would be. And our new price would be P3 because P2 is the same as P1. Okay, so we know that our price has to increase. So let's doodle our money market. If we increase our price, we're going to decrease our money supply. So money supply will fall to M over P2, and our real interest rates will rise from R1 to R2. And since we have to get back to this long run, and we were already there before, all we're going to do is put our LM curve or have it shift back in the economy to its original position. So now the prices, the real interest rates, and the output are all in equilibrium. So R1 now becomes R3. We go back to the real interest rate before. We also go back to the original output. Okay, so in the long run in this case, we're going to see an increase in our real interest rates, a decrease in our output, and an increase in our prices. But in total, in this example, when we change the money demand in the economy, the only real change is going to be an increase in price because we're going to be ending up back at the same real interest rate and back at the same output levels. So it just goes pretty much back to the same place with an increase in price. Okay, now if anybody has any questions on these examples, please let me know. After this video, you will be able to complete homework number five. And I hope you have a great day. We're getting close to the end of the semester. We can do it. All right. So let me know if you have any questions.